Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more seconds for everyone to come in. Um, so we could have an informative, interactive webinar in uh, today's uh, presentation. So I want to thank you all for attending. There's a lot of familiar faces uh, that I see that have already come in. So how's it going? It's nice to see you um, um, in today attending today's webinar. Also, this is a good opportunity um, to introduce yourself. Um, in regards to what type of business you have, what industry, how long have you been in business, um, what type of capital are you seeking. Um, so like that, throughout today's presentation, uh, we'll be able to elaborate more, have more conversation based on some tips, some tools, um, based on from one of our esteemed business consultants, Jose Monte, um, that he is, he will be your access to capital consultant um, once you register for a consultation, if you have already done so. Thank you, and uh, we'll be more happy to connect you with Jose to assist you in the pursuit for your business needs um, to acquire capital. In doing so, um, there's, this is a, um, a recorded uh, webinar, so in case if any anyone has any uh, step out, um, don't worry, all participants will be receiving today's presentation and also the, the YouTube link, so definitely encourage you to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. If you have any questions throughout today's presentation, strongly encourage you to put them in the Q&A. So like that, um, my colleagues Ian and Kelly will be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Okay. So once again, I want to thank you for attending today's webinar. My name is Jesus Padilla. I am the Assistant Director here at the Florida SBDC at FIU under this exciting program, the Business Growth and Acceleration Program, which is the BizCap. And um, allow me to introduce you to our colleague, uh, Jose Monte. Uh, he's our access to capital consultant and uh, he'll briefly discuss from his experience as a, as a lender and uh, and also a business consultant in the realm of access to capital. Jose? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Glad you can all make it. Um, Jose Monte, I'm a access to capital consultant. Um, just a little uh, brief background. I was uh, uh, 30 years as a commercial lender here in South Florida, working with commercial real estate. Commercial lending, CNI, which is commercial and industrial business banking. Um, so I'm here to kind of give you the tips or the pointers as to, you know, how to prepare and and what the lenders are looking for um, in order to improve your chances for an approval and to have a meaningful discussion um, uh, under you know for, with a loan application. Thank you. And then um, also um, in the chat, um, we'll be having some additional upcoming events because um, in the month of April is Financial Literacy Month. So definitely it's a good opportunity for you to get well-versed um, in your financials, um, get also introductions and connections with some of our CDFIs, access capital um, resource partners that we have in the community that can definitely assist you to enhance the conversation um, based on your capital needs. So a brief description of who we are, what we do. We are the Florida SBDC at FIU, as a, we were the 2023 National SBDC of the Year. Um, some of the areas that we provide assistance is that one-to-one -one business consulting, training, and information to small businesses that are physically located here in Miami-Dade and McGraw counties. As of 2022, um, it is our pretty much this is our 10-year anniversary. But as of 2022, we have been able to assist over 7,800 small businesses and has yielded over 119,000 hours of consulting that has resulted $462 million in access capital and have launched over 400 businesses. What is BizCap? Um, these are some pictures from our previous projects that we have done. In the top left hand corner, we had a project working with the Downtown Development Authority, the, the DDA, um, during the Flagler Corridor. Also, we had a previous project here in the city of North Miami Beach. But what is BizCap? It is an initiative that we have done, um, worked closely in 20, since 2016, providing that hypo local consulting training and outreach to small businesses in those targeted communities and commercial corridor. The overall goal is to provide additional tool for the toolkit for businesses are seeking to grow and also to start up their business. Some of the outcomes and of the partnerships with the different uh, communities and organizations throughout Miami-Dade County, we worked with over 133 clients, over 184 have attended community trainings, but at the same time, we have also done the in-person canvassing, going door to door, hearing the heartbeat of the small business owners in those corridors 
um, based on how else we can assist them and how we can provide additional tools for their business success. The BizCap project for this year it has it's been funded through a cooperative agreement with the Small Business Administration. Um, it is in Congressional District um, 27. It encompasses between um, City of Miami, Key Biscayne, Coral Gables, runs through Kendall to Color Bay. And as of the census of 2019, an estimated 86,000 businesses are established within the district, 27. So what are the goals that we want to accomplish in, in this project? It is the three core activities, the training, the outreach, going to door-to-door -door canvassing, that one-on-one -on -one business consulting with our team, along with the data mapping, the surveys of small businesses located in Congressional District 27. But one of our main goals is to work with you, the small business owners, uh, of a goal over a thousand businesses in the district um, for 2024. That includes the training, workshops, and business consulting as well. So in the chat, there's going to be various trainings and workshops uh, for you to, to go ahead and, um, and participate. So we're going to be going over and discussing the, the, um, the, the four core objectives that we have presented for you for today. It is the review questions to help you determine your business financial needs. Sometimes, you know, like um, when a client speaks to Jose, they call Jose, I need, I, need, I need investors, I need venture capitalists, I need angel investor, but the best route for the business will be a micro loan or vice versa. Or it could be a traditional 7A versus a 504 loan. So by having a conversation with, with Jose and our business consultants, that's how you're able to determine which is the best route for your financial needs. At the, end, at the same time, identify those, very, uh, those various financing options for your business, along with the reviewing the available financial options and the pros and cons of each financial options. Jose, from your experience, what are some of the key questions um, when you start talking to your clients um, in regards of um, the, the financial aspects? Like, do you ask for any documents or from the eyes of a lender, what, um, what documents should they be well-versed and prepared for you? Yes, and, and obviously we're talking about businesses that have already started, are already generating sales, um, which is you know the, the the grand part of the businesses. You know you need to have you need to have your tax returns. You need to have um, your projections. If, if you're if your your business for, for let's say a multiple a number of years, three to four or five years, you need to have tax returns for each of those years. You need to have balance sheet. You need to have um, business banking statements. I come across um, some businesses that are that are LLCs, very small businesses, and they tend to mix the the, the business banking personal with the business, and that's that's a problem because the lender is going to ask you for the accounts to see what's coming in, what's going out, and how the, those accounts are being handled. So make sure you always have the business um, bank uh, account separate from anything any personal activities. Um, you need to have your tax returns. Um, if you have any any agreements with any vendors. Um, for sales, that's very important because you know lenders want to know. Well, how do I know that the business is going to continue growing or continue doing steady? Well, if you have if you have any kind of uh, accounts receivable statements, if you have businesses that are ready um, under an agreement to purchase from you or to buy from you, um, all those are important things. But at the end of the day, lenders want to know that you are active, you're selling, um, and that you're making money. Um, you're not making money, you can't repay the loan. So that's uh, that's the first X. Um, and obviously, you need to know, you know, you're going to want to know information about your, what, what business are you in? What, what's the sector? This is a business that's very seasonal, a business that operates for the 12 months out of the year. Um, so, you know, you need to have a good handle on your business, be able to explain it um, in, in, in very good detail. Um, if you're looking for a loan, it can't be just a loan. Of, you know, I want 100000 to grow my business. That's very generic, and lenders, unfortunately, do not want generic requests. They want to see a, a detailed breakdown. I'm looking for hundred thousand, and I need twenty five thousand for marketing for A, B, and C. I'm looking for uh, fifty thousand for inventory because if I can buy more bulk, I save an in inventory. You know, they want to know how, how how this capital is going to make the business better. Um, not just uh, you know I, I'm looking for money. No, they want a specific request with a specific uses for that capital. It cannot be um, how much can I get approved. Lenders do not work on this. Is not when you're buying a home, you can get pre qualified for how much can I borrow for a residence. But in the business uh, community, you need to come in with a specific amount and be able to support you know, how that capital is going to enhance your business. 
you know, those are sort of the, the, the you know, the, the main points, but obviously you need to have financials that reflect the ability um, to service any debt that you're looking to, to apply for. It can't just be, well, if I get the money, I'm going to make money. You know, chances are sometimes that happens, but they want to see that there's a history where you're making money. And if things don't go as planned, there's still an existing cash flow there that can service the loan. Lenders want to lend money out and get it right back, you know. And at the same time, not all businesses, not all industries are the same. So that's always something to be mindful and um, while working with the respective lenders. But then, Jose, I just have one question for you as I got in the Q&A. We, um, you know, do we also deal with financing for new businesses, like a startup concept um, for like a startup ventures um, in regards of access capital? What's the best opportunity, best route to get themselves ready for bankable? Yeah, and I can tell you, look, in, in right now, we're in a difficult financing environment. Um, sometimes banks have their doors wide open and sometimes that door is half shut. Right now, um, banks are really tightening up their credit standards for lending. Um, and banks are obviously a traditional source. Um, businesses that have no sales and that are starting up and are in the, you know getting off the ground, uh, obtaining capital from, from a traditional source is very difficult because you can't show them anything to demonstrate the ability to repay. Um, now, there, there are a lot of, there, there are some other options out there. Some of the fintechs or, or some of these online technology companies that lend money, that, have, that, that lend a lot of money and have a lot of money to lend. Um, they will help you if you have, um, even if you've been around for two months, three months, you have to have some sales. Um, if not, there's some, you may have to go the personal route. Um, you have to have some assets to leverage it. I mean, remember, you're talking about a lender. I mean, would you lend somebody money that doesn't have the ability, that can't show the ability to repay it? Chances are no. Lenders lenders are no, are no different. There's got to be an ability to repay. So some, some for example, banks want, want to see that you've been in business for, for a number of years. Yeah, you've gone through a, a cycle and you're, and you're out there and you're, and you're surviving. Um, but some of the non-traditional sources, the fintechs, the CD5s, the micro, the micro lenders, as long as you have revenue, you, you can be open for three months, but if you've got revenue, you might have a good product, a good service, um, whatever it may be. But if you've got revenue coming in, they will lend to you, you know? And in those cases, since you don't have tax returns or financials, um, typically what they're going to hone in on is they're going to want to see your, your banking statements, business banking statements for, let's say, the last three to six months, where they can see the money coming in from your sales, from your revenue, see the money going out, and at the end of the, day, and at, at the, end of the month, what's the account looking like? Is there excess money? Um, is it being handled or is it overdrawn? If you got money coming in and money going out, at the end of the month you're overdrawn, it's not gonna help you either. That means obviously you, you're, 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 you're in that initial stage which you know, you're, you're spending more than you're generating. And so getting capital in those scenarios is difficult. You have to have the ability um, you know, to demonstrate repayment. Um, outside of that, I can tell you there's 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 business credit cards that will lend to you. Um, if they've approved you, they a lot of them are very open to a small business loan, um, and they're in the business of, of of lending. Now these are higher interest rates; they're not the most attractive, but you know some capital is better than no capital. You have to assess whether, whether the cost of that capital is beneficial to you, or maybe you dig into your savings. Um, there's 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 other there's there's various sources for capital. Some of them, you know, are good. Some of them have a lot of negatives. You know, there's, there's people that have, that own their home, for example, and they can tap into an equity line for their business. Now that's, um, that's a very aggressive interest rate, low interest rate. Um, you can even offset it in your taxes uh, by the mortgage interest. Um, what's the downside? You're, you're, you're tapping a personal asset to help a business. If God forbid that business does not go well, you've got to lean on your primary residence. That's a problem, you know? And banks are not just going to walk away. It's not unsecured. It's now secured. So if your business, if, you, if your business has been around for a couple of years and you think that you can, um, a, a home equity line is a great tool, but you've got to be very wary of the of the concept that you're 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 touching a, a personal asset um, to help assist the business. Thank you, Jose. And then, um, Penny, for your thoughts, um, despite having an idea or being good at entrepreneurship. It's often difficult to start up a business. Equity is a key element for starting a, uh, a startup, a small business venture. You must explore different financing options in order to provide added equity for your business to survive. So um, some of your financial needs, so you can have a full understanding. 
um, first you need to do is to assess your current financial institu um, situation thoroughly. Um, often this means to have a solid business plan with five years of financial projections. Um, like that, it carries the narrative based on the capital infusion that um, that you're seeking. You should not only know how much capital, um, what you need to get started or expand your business, but also know how your revenue streams will look in order to pay back any debt financing. So that carries a conversation as what Jose was saying in regards, I need $100,000, but what is it for? For marketing, for hiring people, for buying new equipment. Um, so like that, you have a good storyline as, okay, the lenders will be able to provide the necessary funds, in return, they're going to get that, get the money back. But at the same time, seeing your business grow as well for down the road, in, um, provide you additional debt or additional uh, capital for your free your business. Here are some key questions that you should be asking yourself when pursuing capital. It's what is the nature you need? Is it, mer is it, is it urgent? Is it down the road? Is it more um, planning for, for a a business expansion, buying, buying equipment, a facility. Um, how great are your risks? In what state in development is your business? Are you have been in business for many years? Started yesterday? Um, or what what's the purpose the capital will be used for? But what is the state of the industry? Is it growing? Is it decreasing? Is your business seasonal, cyclical? Like for example, like buying school uniforms or school supplies. There's always a busy season in the in, in the summertime. No one's buying school supplies now. Um, but at the same time, how strong is your management team and how does your need for financing mesh with your business plan? Make sure that everything has a, um, a narrative, but it's um, it's being um, collaborated amongst each other based on your team members, knowing what is the end goal for your business. This is a good opportunity to start estimating the startup cost um, before you start. Estimate how much it's going to cost doing business the first few months. Um, it could be the the fees for incorporating your business, the price of the signage of your new building. Um, some of the recurring costs will be the cost of utilities, the inventory, and the insurance. But then this is where you're able to start dividing them in two separate categories, the fixed and the variable expenses. The fixed expense includes the rent, the utilities, the administrative costs, the insurance costs, but the variable will be more the inventory, the shipping, the packaging, any sales commission. Any other costs are associated with a direct sale of your product or service. Now, this is where we come into the twofold based on what type of financing that you're looking for, the debt and the equity financing. The debt financing means borrowing money that must be repaid over a period of time, usually with interest. While the equity, it is raising money in exchange for a piece of the ownership of the business. So everything has a pros and cons, but these are two different options of obtaining the different financing options. The debt financing is borrowed money that must be repaid. Um, it's over a period of time with interest. Lender doesn't gain an ownership interest in the business. And loan is often secured by company assets or the borrower's personal guarantee, as what Jose was talking about earlier, in terms of what collateral do you have? Um, is it more the company's assets, like the, uh, the machines or the inventory? And then uh, some of the sources will include the banks, the savings, any loans, the credit unions, uh, SBA guarantee loans, um, also the family and friends and former associates as well to be as a source of debt financing. While the equity financing, once again, it is raising money in exchange for a share of the ownership. We become partners. Um, this is the, most, the pretty much this is the most common source of equity funding comes from venture capitalists, a private equity investor that provides capital to companies exhibiting high growth potential in exchange for an equity state. And this could also be with friends, relatives, um, industry colleagues, and uh, as they are the subject matter experts within that industry, and they know how to provide you additional assistance um, for, um, for the business to grow by, by 10x. And this is one of the most important areas that, um, that you have to definitely look into. It's when a small business requests loans, one of the first things the lender looks is your personal and your business credit history. So before you even start the process of preparing a loan request, you wanna make sure that you have a good credit history. That's one of the five C's, one of the most important areas. So definitely um, work on your credit before proceeding, um, moving forward for the um, pursuit for access to capital.
Jose, do you have any um, comments and tidbits on the credit history part? Yeah, I mean, obviously, credit history is, you know, as we, you know, we live in a credit history world. Um, and on a, on a small business, um, personal credit history um, is front and center. Um, lenders look at it um, in this fashion. If your personal credit history is, um, is, 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 is handled properly, you have a good credit score, um, there's no delinquencies, um, they, they, it's, it's a mirror to them. If he handles his credit history, personal credit history well, chances are the business history will be handled in the same organized uh, fashion. If you have poor credit history, um, it's, 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 it's the same thing. They'll look at, well, we, we can't run his personal credit history very well. Chances are the business uh, probably will not be run very well. Now, depending on the lender, um, different, different types of lenders have different types of credit requirements. Um, which lender has the highest credit requirement? Those would be your banks. The banks, uh, you know, those, those are regulated uh, um, institutions and they have the higher credit standards that they require and the more rigorous process. Some of the, some of the community lending organizations, the CFI, the micro lenders, those have much more lenient credit history. Um, sometimes um, what you would consider poor credit history is, is not necessarily a factor for them. They're again. They're more geared because you know these these small micro lenders. They're not doing large construction projects. They're not doing large shopping centers. Their their main focus is the small business uh, uh, lending market. So they know that credit is going to be something that could be is not always going to be great. But she small business owners, you know, they're, they're leveraged to get the business going, or they use a lot of uh, personal assets to get the business up and running um, and moving forward. So they have lower standards. Um, but again, they focus again on sales. Do you have sales? Is, is your product, your service, your industry, whatever your business may be, is it, is it viable? Is it working? Um, you know, did you build a better mousetrap? So whatever, whatever business you have, are, it, you know, obviously if you have a market and you're selling and you, have, and, you, and, you, and you can show monthly revenues, steady monthly revenues, they focus more on that. Um, they don't focus so much on, on, on personal credit, but it depends. It depends on the lender. Um, traditional lenders like banks have 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 much tighter credit standards. Your your CFIs, your your micro lenders, your community lending organizations, um, those have much more laxed lending process and credit requirements. So don't think because you have a you know you have a six hundred, which is might considered poly poor to a to a bank, um, six hundred probably meets the standard to a micro lender. So it just depends on on the amount of money, your business, how you're doing, and what lenders we are we are we are thinking about. Thank you, Jose. And then this is where you're able to have a collateral on conversation. It's another form of security in which can be used to assure the lender that you have a second source of loan repayment. Um, assets such as the equipment, buildings, accounts receivable, and inventory are considered possible sources of repayment if they can be sold to the bank for cash. So definitely um, what Jose mentioned earlier that try not to put your house as collateral because then if, if something happens to the business, then um, the bank will be going for the house. So definitely make sure that everything is separated and clean um, for your business. But at the same time, collaterals can also consist of assets that are usable in the business as well as personal assets that remain outside the business. So it's use your judgment based on no two businesses are the same once again. Um, as yeah, a it, source of collaterals. Yeah, just one, one quick comment. Um, you know, just to give you an example, if your business is a struggling business and you're, you need cash to survive, and if you don't get this cash, um, let's say you could be in some trouble, obviously I would not tap into any personal assets in that situation. But if you've got a business that's that's um, that's not necessarily tight with money, you'd like some cash because cash could help you grow, but if you don't get it, the business is not going to be any, any worse off. And all of a sudden, you get an opportunity to buy a, a bulk inventory or, or to provide certain services before you couldn't that will just enhance. In other words, it's, you know, if you don't get it, it's not gonna, it's not, it won't be detrimental to the business. It's a situation where maybe a home equity line could be perfect because you can tap into really, really low interest rate uh, um, uh, cash for your business. Um, and if and if you're well if you're well organized and responsive, uh, responsible in the handling, um, that's that's a very cheap source um, with minimal 
minimal application process. Um, uh, but again, it, it's I, I, I would consider that only if, if it's something that can enhance your business, but um, do not, I, I would not tap into anything personal of your, if your business is, is struggling or if you're just getting off the ground um, because it's unproven. And last thing you wanna do is, is, is have a personal asset, which is your homestead tied up for the business. And again, on, on the, any, any loan you get, regardless, on a small business loan, you know, typically we're not talking collateral in general. Um, unless you've got, unless you own your building or your con your your commercial condo unit, um, so they're going to take a UCC one. UCC one is going to is going to is going to generally it's going to type your equipment, your accounts receivable, any inventory, um, any machinery at the office. It's a general blanket on all the assets. Um, so that's typically what you're going to have. That in your personal guarantee, a small bit, any small business loan that's out there, um, probably regardless of the lender, um, will have a personal guarantee with it. That's a uh, that's a uh, that's a standard. Then this is where you have to start doing like the full self assessment of what is the purpose of the capital. If it's going to be a short term or a long term goal, based on what is the need for the business. So um, the short term um, financing can be a form of an overdraft, letter of credit, short term loan. But um, the long terms, it's more in the realm of leasing or buying heavy machinery or a building. Um, once again, it's. The short term is generally less than one year, provides quick ways to get liquid um, liquidity, um, fulfill small economic needs, and allows your business to capitalize on the opportunities. Sometimes the short term financing has higher interest rates and in general doesn't fulfill your long term goal capital investment needs. While the long term financing, it is generally mold for, for more than for one year, and it can be taken back based on the um, equipment. Um, once again, a facility or warehouse, and has a they tend to have a lower interest, but it the longevity of repaying it back it's a longer scale. Now, there's various types of loans um, that are available to you, and the terms of those loans will typically will be determined based on your business organization, um, whether you you are an LLC or or an organization of some other kind. So, like I said earlier. No two businesses, no two industries are the same. So this is where you're able to start seeing the process elimination, which is the best loan route for you. The general, one of the most common ones is a 7A loan. It is uh, provides the financial help for small businesses with special requirements. It is more for the long-term or long-term working capital, refinance and existing uh, business debt, but also you could purchase fixtures, supplies and furniture. And um, this is where you're able to purchase the real estate, the lands, the buildings, and establishing a new business or an exist or assisting in the acquisition operations of the expansion of an existing business. So you could definitely use it for um, acquiring new businesses for the expansion of your existing business. Also, um, once again, refinancing any debts, but they're under certain conditions. Jose Foma, um, do you have any additional information of the seven A's? Yeah, I mean the seven A is is viewed as a as a business loan. It's not really a loan to acquire real estate, but as as Jesus mentioned, if you're buying a business and there's real estate involved, um, then the seven A could be the product. But typically, seven A is a it's a business type, working capital type. Um, if you're buying, for example, if you're buying, um, let's say you're, let's say you're in marine transport, you're buying a container ship. Um, a seven A will probably be the loan for that product because it's a business related loan. Um, seven A's usually have collateral such as real estate or could be, um, could be, could be, um, usually heavy machinery, machinery that can be titled, whether it's a container vessel, um, whether it's, uh, talking about, um, commercial transport trucks, um, excavation trucks. These are usually very, very large machine and equipment is where the seven A comes in. Um, the, the problem with the problem with the seven A or the problem right now in the market is the seven A. Um, right now is an, is an expensive loan. Um, it's a loan that's fixed usually every three months. So it's adjusted every quarter. Um, it's tied to, to prime. Um, right now it's around uh, between 12 and to 13%. So it is, it's, it's not a cheap loan. It's not a cheap loan. Um, 
but the seven A obviously uh, just to understand when you're applying for an SBA loan, a seven A loan, um, you're applying through a bank. Um, the SBA loan programs are administered through the traditional lending um, lending institutions. Um, almost every bank in town has an SBA lender or a lender department, depending on the size of the bank. And you would approach them to speak to the, you know, I want to speak to your SBA uh, loan officer. Um, if, if that's the kind of product that may fit your business, depending on the amount, uh, the purpose, and, and your business. Um, but remember, you're applying through a bank, so the process of applying for an SBA loan is a rigorous process. It is not like applying for a micro loan. This this is a this is an A to Z underwriting um, that that you, that you'll do through the bank, and that bank is the, uh, they administer and they handle the SBA type loans, and that's the seven A. And that, I'm assuming the five hundred four we'll, we'll discuss as well, which is that's more of a of a of a, of a tangible collateral long term uh, long term asset uh, financing product. Five hundred four. Yep, and this is what Jose was talking about as a long-term financing project um, that, that promotes your business growth and job creation. And um, this could also be used um, for the construction or, or new facilities and, um, and all different ranges of different assets for the growth of your business yeah. as well. It, yeah, it, it, I mean, if you're looking to, if you're looking to buy, um, if you're looking to buy, let's say, your warehouse, if you're looking to buy your commercial condo, um, the, you know, your, your new facility, if you're renting and also the opportunity to buy. Uh, the, the 504 is, 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 is contrary to the, S, to the 705, 7, the 7A, which is expensive today in the market. It, it goes up and down, but right now it's expensive, expensive loan. The 504 is a very attractive loan um, because typically if you wanted to buy, if you're going to buy your warehouse where you maintain your inventory, um, you walk into a bank, um, bank's going to want anywhere from 25 to 30% equity up front. So let's say, use around numbers, you're buying a million dollar uh, warehouse, you need to have 300,000, you know, 250 um, in liquidity to, to close that deal. Um, in the 504, um, you can put a minute, you can put 10% uh, down. So that's very, very attractive. You know, the other 90% is put between the bank, the bank financing and the SBA. Um, so, I mean, you're not going to find any, any real estate, any real estate, uh, uh, purchase with less than a 10% requirement anywhere. So it's an attractive loan. If, if you're in that market to buy, uh, to buy a building, or if you have land and you want to build, you know, your new facility or transfer, what have you, the 504 is a, it's a, it's a very attractive loan product. And the rate is, the rate's probably about the half of the 7A. So you're talking a rate of about six and a quarter, which is probably half of what the 7A is. Uh, but again, this is a tangible secured loan. So that's why the rate's much more uh, much more attractive. And then um, at the same time, um, the micro loans could also serve um, as another viable source of, of loans. Um, some micro lenders, they provide a little bit more than 50,000, but on average, it's just something just to get the ball rolling um, to, to start um, have a traction of your business. Um, at the same time, it needs to be used for working capital, inventory, furniture, equipment, but not paying any existing debts or purchasing real estate. So um, there are several nonprofits, community-based organizations that are experienced in lending and business management assistance. So individual requirements will, requ uh, will vary from one organization to the other. Some might be asking you, you have to be in business more than six months or generating sales of X amount of dollars. Some might ask you for a business plan. So that'll vary, but at the same time, we'll be more happy to connect you with those organizations so that you have a seat at the table. So once you hit those certain metrics that they that they ask, you'll be able to own that table as well. So definitely, this is what we'll be able to have that conversation based on which is the best alternative, best route um, for your pursuit for capital. Then um, in the uh, venture capital, this is where it's a type of e equity financing that addresses the funding needs of your entrepreneurial venture which for reasons, size, and assets of stage of development cannot seek tra the traditional route of sources, such as, the, such as the banks. And this is where it's made up in cash in exchange for shares and plays an active role of the company that's being invested in. There's always a good and bad. So the good thing is that that, that venture capitalist, um, which can, um, can raise your money um, that you could keep, you don't have to repay it or take account in the interest rate, but... It, it, it helped your business to grow quickly 
and it is generally committed in the long-term goal. But at the same time, um, they will own a stake in your business, might have at times, depending on the amount of investment, make controlling decisions. So raising capital um, amounts to give you a share of your business. So if it's a if you're giving a piece of the pie, you have to take into the account um, their 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 voice and their decision making um, based on what you would like to do with the goal of your business. Along with the angel investors, these are high net worth individuals who seek high returns through private investments in startup companies. Uh, they typically invest in ventures involved in industries or technologies with one has um, familiarity in that industry. Um, so they'll be able to guide the, um, the, res the respected entrepreneur with the, with the business, with the management, with the know-hows um, to assess the company's value. One of the advantages is that angel investors provide that needed capital right off the bat and generally agree towards the investment agreement terms compared to the traditional sources of funding. And once again, always, um, they, they look ready um, to look beyond the financial return. So they're there to guide you and give you the business acumen uh, for your business. They can be costly at times and want high returns of their investment it should you do the exit strategy. Um, but at the same time, the angel investor may often want to be involved in those decision-making process of your business and, may, and you may virtually lose control. So it can be a difficult task to find out which angel investors um, as they usually operate behind the scenes. This is one of the uh, the starting points in which uh, some of our clients, um, they start obtaining some capital to start up their business is crowdfunding, like platforms as a uh, fundable uh, Kickstarter, um, just to get the brand awareness, but also test the market based on the idea of their business. Um, there's four different ways of crowdfunding. It could be donation-based, equity-based, debt-based, and reward-based. So an example for donation-based is, who would like to donate money for my business venture? There's no nothing returned um, for any donations that I have received. But the equity base, it is, um, you know, whoever invests in my whoever invests five dollars towards my business, you will get one percent of the business venture once I hit an X amount of um of sales. Um, the debt base, it will be anyone who 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 don't um, you know, pay invest in my business for every five dollars, I will pay a five percent interest um as a return. And the reward base that anyone that 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 don't that um pretty much provides me five dollars in return once I'm ready to go you will get a t-shirt or 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 the free meal on me based on my hot dog card stand. So it all varies based on different ways of crowdfunding. So these are different avenues how you could be able to test the market to make sure that you're creating that brand awareness and it helps to create that consumer behavior in the market research as well. This is another opportunity that it's uh, the peer-to-peer, -peer, that it's sharing your idea with other people in hopes that they will also invest in your business. And this way, um, you'll be able to find takers. You might have a source of financing for your business. And this is where you have to determine how much you, um, you need to borrow and define the purpose of the loan and post your listing online. This is where you're able to find the advantage of choosing the host of lenders and settle, settling on that repayment terms that you will feel that's suited for you. It also makes it possible to avoid the lengthy process of the um, of the taking a loan through the conventional source. And then along with the disadvantage that the terms of lending can be often vague and the lender may have certain hidden um, terms of, of lending. So you should check out carefully before you go ahead and with this model of financing. This is where oftentimes where it's the uh, one of the main sources of getting the ball rolling, it's the, the family and friends. Um, it's an easy source of financing for your business. Um, any entrepreneurs who lack on the credit history or don't want to hassle the dealing with the banks or private lenders, they often turn to family and friends to finance their business. Um, this is the quickest access to get cash with fewer hoops to jump through. But on the flip side, if your business fails and, or, or you're late in repaying the money, um, you may be heading with some difficult conflict um, with your family and friends. So decide 
whether you want to get financing from your family and friends as a loan or investment in exchange for shared business. Um, it's always good to have everything in agreement and a repayment plan because after all, it is a business transaction. And then um, here is like a small recap from today's presentation. It is determining your actual financial needs, identify those varying options for your business, explain those available um, explain those available financial options and the pros and cons of each options that is available for you. But this is where I'm giving you the homework to enhance the conversation with Jose, with your respective lenders. It is, these are the next steps that I want you to have um, be taken away. It's analyze your financial situation of your business. What are your basic and what are your needs at this present moment? and arrive at the exact amount of financing that you need and the purpose for which you need it for. So once you do a full self-assessment of your financial situation, then we could definitely go ahead and proceed with those following steps. It's create a business plan. If you have a business plan, that's not a problem. We have consultants that can assist you in developing that business plan. This is where the business plan, it's, um, it showcases your business, the growth of your of, of your of your business, how much capital you need, it creates that story so you're able to approach them for the potential financing options. Evaluate those financial options that is best for your venture. Evaluate the pros and cons of those options and decide on the financing options that suits you best. And then this is where you'll be able to approach the respective lenders and investors based on which is the best route for you. Um, and you have decided on a loan, review how your business venture is bankable with the terms and focus on the five C's of credit. This is where it's a big key, key takeaway. The five C's of credit is your character, the capacity, the capital, collateral, and conditions. The character, how's your character? Have you missed any payments? or you're, you're, you pay every month and you have a zero balance, perfect, That's a, you have a strong character. What's the capacity? Do you have, do you have the, the capacity to withstand more debt? Or are you able to repay the debt in based on the terms, based on how much you're seeking? Capital, how much liquid, you know, the skinny game do you have, along with the collateral as a second source of, um, of repayment in the conditions, how long is it gonna be the length of, um, of the, of the terms and what you're going to be using that for. So having a clear understanding of the five C's of credit will definitely enhance and vocabulary the same language with your respective lenders, investors, but at the same time, the accountants. So that they're able to show you, these are your numbers. So knowledge is power. So that this is where you're able to be financial literate in regards of have a good understanding what the conversation is going and last but not least, explore those opportunities for growth. Once you're secured the financing, now you can concentrate on using it, um, using the best to expand your business based on what you're looking the, the funds to use it for. So those are the those the, those are the homework that I'm providing for you. So that I want you to enhance the conversation with our consultants and your respective lenders. But then um, if you have any questions, strongly encourage you to put them in the Q and A. So that throughout today's um, you know, so right here we'll be able to answer those questions for you. Once again, this is a recorded webinar, so all participants will be receiving today's presentation along with the recording on the YouTube channel. Strongly encourage you to like and subscribe, but also um, you'll be receiving today's presentation as well. And in the chat, there's gonna be some upcoming events that definitely encourage you to participate. On April 5th, um, we'll be having an in-person lenders roundtable discussion as we have invited five different um, community organizations in the, in, the, in the community that provide lending. So it's a good opportunity for you to ask the key questions that you have um, to five um, um, great partners. And who knows, that's a good op opportunity for you, introduction, um, to get um, capital um, by working with them on the spot. And then, um, but definitely anything that we do to assist you, you know, we're an email or phone call way to assist you with your business needs. So Jose, I have a question for you. What is the best loan to acquire an existing business? Okay, well, I mean, I can tell you right off the bat, uh, would be an S SBA 7A loan. However, you know, that there's a lot of, it depends, you know, what business are you buying? What is the cost of the business? Um, 
is the amount of money that you need to acquire that business. Does the existing company, could it get it on its own? In other words, does it, does, does it need to approach it as a business acquisition loan or does the existing business, that's, you know, that the, the one that's purchasing the other business, does it have enough uh, financial capacity to, to get a loan on its own? So it, 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 it depends and it depends on the amount. But I can tell you the SBA 7A um, does business acquisition loans uh, all day long, but it depends on the amount. Are you, are you buying a business for 50,000 or are you buying it for 500,000? So it, it depends. It depends. There's there's different sources. Uh, it just depends on the amount, depends on the existing business, depends on the business you're buying. Because um, remember, if you, if you approach it as a business loan uh, to acquire a new business, the lender's gonna wanna see the financials on the existing company and on the company you're buying. And then it, it, it gets a little more complicated because of the, the company you're buying, um, maybe it is, let's, let's say it's not performing as well as the one that's acquiring it, you know, so that could perhaps bring down a little bit on, on the transaction. It, it just depends. And it's gotta be obviously, you demonstrate um, while the merger of these two businesses is going to, is, is, is a good thing. How this is gonna translate in, into, you know, a synergy of com combined sales, of combined inventory, combined products, how it's gonna, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a larger market capture um, because I'm buying a competitor. So it depends on different factors, but um, there's no one perfect loan. I can tell you in, 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 in general, the SBA 7A loan is a loan geared for businesses. And I see it all day long um, financing um, companies that are buying businesses. So that's a 7A. But again, I would tell you it depends on other factors, you know. And then um, I have a question here. Um, what would be the best um, loan for, for an, an e-commerce business? With less than one year in the market, um, it all varies, you know, based on um having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with our consultants, um, to go in depth of your of your figures, the capacity, any collateral, um, so that, that we'll be able to best guide based on which is the best loan amount, but at the same time, which financial organization will be able to assist you um to obtain the necessary funds that you're seeking. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay, yeah. So okay, I don't have any additional questions. All right. So um, so once again, I want to thank you all for attending today's webinar. But like I said, um, we'll be you'll, you'll be receiving today's presentation, the video recording, along some of our upcoming events. I strongly encourage you to participate, as uh, it will definitely enhance the pursuit of your capital needs, but also your business growth. Additional tools for your toolbox, because at the end, at the end of the day, we're family. So anything that we can do to assist you with your business needs. Um, shoot us an email, um, and we'll be more happy to guide you with your business growth. So I want to thank you all, um, Jose, Ian, Kelly, but also at the same time, all the participants from today's webinar. So thank you all, and uh, have a good afternoon. Take care, everyone. Right. Thank you for joining, everybody.